The author of this awesome jingle is our sound master, Mr. TDM. And now for something completely different. The second seminary of our schedule today is a presentation by Icon of Syndica about a very interesting little old computer, PP01. Icon, they are all yours. Thank you, Alien. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to see you all here. I was thinking earlier really, uh, you will be out of, for lunch, but it, it's great to see you see here. So, about PP01, I have a presentation prepared for the last year, but it couldn't fit into the schedule. Please, some master. From me. <laughs> From me, so <some> faster. <laughs> okay, so I can continue hopefully. Now you can hear without the feedback. That's a great thing on forever because usually you suffer from feedback here quite a lot. Anyway, so I had a presentation last year, prepared everything and go on, but never happened. So basically, Atlantis is gone and now we have uh, Elias with us on the 20th forever. It's the anniversary and I think the PP01 is really a kind of a legal alien from the outside space. Uh, at least for many foreigners, you never heard about that computers, I think. So, and I think it's legacy because it has something to say for uh, <laughs> really uh, for the demo scene, and I think I, you will you will see that maybe later on. Uh, anyway, what it's all about is uh, standard CPU 8080 for. I think it was one eight five. We'll come to that in the next slide. <laughs> and it has 64k of RAM, 24k of uh, video RAM out of that 64, which is very interesting and important because you have three full bit plays, RGB, and it has very great graphics capabilities. You will see later. And obviously 16K of ROM uh, with basic, yeah. And I, I would say because of those big plays, as you, as you can see, it's uh, I think one of the most colorful computers from Hong Kong, as you call it. And it's ever uh, happy, as you know, that from you, yeah. So how it was born, the whole computer is quite big, you can see there on my desk. And it was born in Chilina. It was born in Czechoslovakia, but actually it's a fully Slovak computer, similarly to PMD H5. But PMD was made in Piechtani, then the uh, mass production they moved to Bratislava. But this was really born in Chilina. Uh, around 85, uh, a prototype series was about 500 pieces, and the production, mass production, moved from Žilina to Banska Bystrica, and later on to Rimavska Slobota. Uh, uh, well, DOVT it was Viskovni Gustavi Pošte Tehniki, I translate, and ZVT is Tavodivi Pošte Tehniki. 
and family is maybe and I, I think we could see more of those uh, computers uh, around the Czechoslovakia at that time uh, under that SMEP common name as a family. System Ali Electronics is a small computer system. Okay, what is it based on? Basically you see the triple chips on the left hand side is AT80 CPU made in Tesla. Uh, and of course, clock generator 8224 and then bus uh, transceiver 8228. And on the right hand side, you see the ROM board consisting 16K, really 16 by 1. So it was really made uh, 1K by 8 chips and 16 chips on the board. So it was quite long. It was kind of a transceiver with the length of a bus is uh, on a PCB routing. And this is the main board. Yeah? So we, everything is basically uh, made very conceptual, I would say. Uh, everything has a separate board, as you can see the, the ROM board on the previous slide. This is the main board with the CPU. And the peripherals and video processor is made out of TTL chips, the standard logic in the 80s. This is the RAM board, uh, again like uh, 48 chips together, 16 by 1. This is the keyboard. Actually, the keyboard looks professional comparing to some other like Ondra and so on, but this one was made of telephone keys, right? So it was a keycap built for put on top of the telephone keys, so it was very similar feeling as PMB 851, which is really like breaking keyboard. It was breaking any of that, but this was much better with the keycap. It was uh, the feeling it was a little bit better, but it was, wasn't a professional people like 10, uh, six, uh, sorry, 16 bit computer, PP06, 8088, people, it was introduced a few hours, a few minutes after this one, and it has really professional keyboard with the better keycaps than this one, this was like a four. I think it doesn't mean it for schools and industry mainly because it was very expandable and it was a small model of some Intel system. I think it had like, a, a, it was called i i bus, which was Intel compatible. But the development of uh, peripherals was a bit complicated because of this bus. And this is the power supply, actually, yeah, it's a bit more advanced than the first version of the power supply for computers we had in, in Czechoslovakia, uh, because it's a uh, switching power supply, so it, it had like a second or third generation of PMD85. Uh, from beginning, it was really like a linear power supply, but this is really advanced and it can uh, I think uh, it is 95 watts, so it's really for its size at that time, it was quite, quite advanced. So, what, what the computer really can do? <laughs> Today, not that much, obviously, but I think it was a very standard configuration for <laughs> IQ 151, EMB85, and Ondra. Uh, and other computers at the time. So 96 watts is of peak power, you will really get 2 megahertz of CPU speed, uh, 64K of memory, 24K, which is quite important, uh, separate bit planes for RGB, and the graphics is quite smooth, it's 20, uh, 256 by 256 pixels. And the keyboard I already described how it was built. There is a, I think, four bit here. I believe it was uh, advertised, but I think it's one bit here for the keyboard. 
Oh, that's confirmed. It's a 4-bit EA on uh, parallel interface A255. So how it will disappear, I think it never appeared in the problem. So, but actually on some forums here in Czechoslovakia, more people are just raising hands. Who has a PT-01? Raise your hand. Uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, uh, okay. I don't believe it. Really? Oh, uh, you are the man. <laughs> okay, so we don't know how it disappeared, but basically many people still have the computer on the shelves. And I think it's now time to revive that technology because it's quite interesting. Yeah. So, the, the first uh, great thing that we could see is really what we see then five did, the guy who is with us today here. And, uh, and he really scanned uh, all the schematics and materials and now you can find it on the uh, SAEI dot yeah. Uh, and really, it's, it's the great source for information, especially I have to repair like the only 10 zero ones uh, till now. And without that, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Never ever. So it's really great source for any of you who is interested in, in that computer. Uh, then the kind of revival of a page for DOVT Shilina uh, and they had some uh, memoirs written in PDF format so you can download and read unfortunately it's in the slow run only but it's interesting reading maybe Google Translate will, will help you but it's probably hardly readable for foreigners uh, and it's saying about the development of the system and how it evolved from the beginning PP06 and then the Velvet Revolution came and basically disappeared in favor of uh, IBM PC clones and computers. And now we have Roman with us, who is the author of the emulator. An emulator is the thing, how to revive some old 8-bit technology, I think. Because you can run, develop and test everything on your PC and then put it on the real hardware and enjoy it. So, and Roman had that... Hello. So, Roman, I think he had a lot that three, four years ago, but it was never released to public because there was no community to use it, basically. So it was, I think, shared with the syndicate and other groups. People around here probably, like for every group, uh, could, could have it. But now it's publicly available on the web and no one is actively developing it with some new features that we are really adding to the hardware uh, basically, we started last year, forever, I think, with the development of a very new interface for the mass storage. So, we didn't have that for 30 years, right? So, we could load something from well, uh, old tapes, never worked, right? So, but I think now we have the opportunity to keep it alive, really, if we are developing a computer itself or an emulator, then we can share things because we have now the storage interface. And recently, I think two or three weeks ago, was uh, a music and sound enhancer. It's a small PCB with a sound chip, so basically it's similar to on the PMD85. You have uh, MIF85, and now we have similar interface attached to PP01 over there. And you can play the music, the same sound chip as in some coupe, 
just still available around, like you can buy it on, on eBay and build it yourself. So we will just release out forever. Please bear with us, it will take two, maybe one or two weeks just to release the thematics and you will be able to create yourself the interface and attach to the computer. So this is the mass storage interface. It's really, you cannot only load, but you can also save, which is important because we didn't have that on Spectrum uh, for many years until ESX Plus came. Uh, and this is uh, as the uh, the ROM slot on the original computer was intended just to read from the memory. It was never intended to write something into the memory because there was no RAM chip, obviously. So we had to add one more cable. It's a bit annoying, but it's there to, to enable bi-directional communication between the computer and the module. So you can basically choose what you will load. Not like a static, there is a RAM chip which you can load with some software from SD card. So obviously the save is over because it goes over the serial line but the load is uh, much quicker because it's on parallel bus so you download it as from from ROM, original ROM chip. It, it is uh, accessible directly for to CPU. So again, uh, yeah, just a recap slide. We didn't have a mass storage. We didn't have a chance to preserve any existing software. If, if there is any existing software, just raise your hand and let me know. I will try to load it and preserve it. Uh, so I think it's, it's a whole new chapter for for PP01 and. Yeah, and again, I was really thinking last year when I was preparing the presentation, like the user community is so tiny, there are no people actually having or using or ever turned on PP01 or ever seen. Like, okay, all the glory. <laughs> Uh, but it's really, it's, it's growing, so I think we need to revive that because in, in some like, cases like PMD85 was revived just because of RM team, the guys who really developed a great emulator and I think we are opening that for PP01 now or Roman, mainly Lord Roman, I don't think that Martin is contributing to, but uh, it's really uh, chance for us, for all of us, to, to keep it alive. And now it's a Q&A section. <laughs> Any questions, guys? Or anything I need to add to the presentation, okay? You have enough spare parts? Well, spare parts. It's a case of delay, as in spectrum, micro drives, like EBC Micro, for example, and other ULAs around the globe. So it's a TPL chip. So you can basically still replace the standard 00s zero with uh, low power SCAT, SCAT kit, LS, or HCP chips with some minor degradation, especially if you're not replacing it with either RAM. Uh, and things like that, it, it usually works. So, yes, I would say that I, I have enough spare chips, but okay, that was uh, one of the things I almost forgot. Like, I have a t shirt on the winner of the quiz. Uh, and the question for the quiz is really how many chips do you think is in this computer? No, it's not 112. It's more. I'm counting all the chips, including RAM board, ROM board. Oh, ROM board, sorry. <laughs> Lows. Lows, better. Something better. 